So children, today we will start time and motion, right? This is your first chapter in physics. Now, what is time? If I ask you, what is time? You may not be able to define it. Time is defined as the gap between two events. Supposing you get up early in the morning. After that you come to school. So there is a gap between getting up in the morning from bed and then you are coming to school. So this gap between the two events is called as time. Now time is very important in the life of each and every man. You must have heard a common proverb in English that time and time waits for none. So at your age, whatever time you get for your studies, you must utilize it fully. Throughout your student life, the time that you get to prepare yourself for tomorrow, for your future, for facing the world, this time is extremely important. Once you achieve your ambition, after that you can do whatever you feel like. So you can understand the importance of time. So not only in today's world, the importance of time was observed even during ancient period. So from ancient period, people wanted to measure this time. As a result, different types of clocks were invented. For example, sand clock, sundial, candle clock, water clock, obelisk. So different types of clocks were made. <coughs> now, during ancient time, whatever clocks were made, they never gave accurate time because think of sand clock. What is a sand clock? It has two chambers, one at the top, one at the bottom. If you are having the book, then you can see the picture. The upper chamber and the bottom chamber they are connected with a very thin hole, minute hole. The upper chamber is filled with sand. Clear? Now once all of the sand passes to the bottom chamber, this time was calculated for a certain period. As soon as the upper chamber became empty, the clock got has had to be inverted. So that the filled bottom chamber becomes the upper chamber and the vacant upper chamber became the bottom chamber. So again, that means what? A person had to keep an eye all the time that when the upper chamber is becoming vacant and then he had to hurry and then turn it upside down. So definitely some time got wasted because some time definitely the person takes to invert it to make it upside down. So it was not an accurate clock. Similarly, candle clock also. A candle was made to burn. Certain portion of the candle was marked and the time taken by the candle to burn through that particular distance was calculated. So in this way, in this way, different types of clock got invented. Sundial and obelisk they calculate they were calculated the time was calculated on the basis of the shadow but it was possible to calculate time only during the day because in the moonlight sundial obelisk could not calculate time so sand clock candle clock water clock they were used to measure time at the at night whereas during the day 
sundial and obelisks were used. Later on, after just few hundred centuries ago, see, few hundred years ago, pendulum was made. Now, what is a pendulum? Please look at the board. This is called as bomb. Actually, it is a metallic ball. This metallic ball is called as bomb. It is hung by a string, inextensible string from a rigid support. This whole arrangement is called as pendulum. Got it? So this whole arrangement, this string or thread along with the metallic ball attached or tied at the bottom, this whole arrangement is called as pendulum. Clear? Now, how was it calculated? This was first done by Galileo. You must have heard famous scientist Galileo, he first found that when a bob is pulled in one side, means it was displaced through an angle and then released. Supposing it is at O, it was brought to, which was taken to A and then released. Then it used to swing and come on the other side almost to the same angle at B and the time taken was same. Again, the pendulum used to come from B to O and again through O, it went to A. So this complete movement of the pendulum from O to A, then from A back to O, then from O to B on the other side, and from back, back from B to O. This is called as one oscillation. So Galileo was the first person to observe that this oscillation of a pendulum gets repeated in a regular interval of time. And hence, the first pendulum clock was made by Galileo. Clear? Because he observed that this oscillation of a pendulum gets repeated after the same interval of time. This helped him to make the first mechanical clock with the help of an oscillating pendulum. Nowadays, you will find different types of clocks are there. You are having table clock, you are having wall clock, you are having wristwatch and various other types of watches including digital watch of or digital clocks of today. Now again clocks are used in different for different purposes like we are wearing wristwatch. At home you are having wall clock or table clock. At a time of sports event, in athletic event, for example in a race, people use a stopwatch. So as days are passing by, more and more developed forms of watches are taking the place of old mechanical pendulum clocks. Nowadays, we are using electronic watches. In electronic watch, a quartz crystal
is made to vibrate by the help of electricity which is supplied by electronic cells as they vibrate they are studied or they are transmitted through the circuit into a small machine which is capable of moving the hands of a clock or hands of a watch so in this way quartz has been utilized in our today's watches and clocks of various kind but to give accurate measurement of time we take help of the atomic clock which is present in the national physical laboratory at new delhi where cesium is used for its working so radiations given out by cesium is utilized so cesium clocks are used to maintain accurate time because the accuracy is 1 millionth of a second you understand 1 millionth 1 million is 10 lakh so one second if you divide into 10 lakh equal parts then each part so accuracy is correct up to 1 millionth of a second that is called cesium clock here the radiation of cesium atom is used for the working of the clock clear now clocks use two types of methods for measuring time one is called as 12 hour method another is called as 24 hour method so two different methods 12 hour method 24 hour method now 12 hour method is generally used at home domestic purposes or official purposes in our watches in the clocks wall clock table clock all these clocks you use 12 hour method whereas 24 hour method clock is used at railway station at airport for showing the timing of aeroplanes in airport for showing the arrival and departure of trains in railway station we use 24 hour clock now <clears throat> you must have heard of am and pm now what is am am means anti meridian and what is pm pm means post meridian this anti meridian is the time which starts at 12 o'clock midnight so anti meridian starts at 12 o'clock midnight and ends at 12 o'clock noon whereas post meridian starts at 12 o'clock noon ends at 12 o'clock midnight so that is why we say 10 am 11 am 12 noon then 12 01 pm 
ओके और वन पी एम इन दिस वे ट्वेल्व मिड नाइट हियर विल से एम नाउ इन अ ट्वेंटी फोर आर क्लॉक वॉट इज द डिफरेंस एम पी एम हैज नो वैल्यू देर वी राइट आर्स सपोज इफ आई गिव यू जीरो जीरो टेन आर्स दिस मीन्स वॉट दिस इज अ ट्वेंटी फोर आवर क्लॉक वॉट इज द टाइम नाउ दिस मीन्स Twelve ten a.m. That is ten minutes past midnight. Understood? Similarly, if I say one zero one zero zero hours means it is one a.m. at night. On the other hand, if I say thirteen thirty hours, this means what? This means one thirty p.m. in the afternoon. Understood? So this is how you must know to calculate time both in twelve-hour method and twenty-four-hour method. Understood, children? So you must write whatever I have given. Are you writing or not? You should write down in your Rough copy. After that, you read the chapter, read the part which has been taught. Go through the notes. Means go through the notes which you have taken right now. Those notes. And after I finish the whole chapter, question answers will be provided, which you will write down in your physics copy. And all the diagrams, whichever I will tell you, you must draw them on the blank page. Never write anything in the blank page. And whenever you are writing, always. leave the first page first page you must leave then from second page onwards you will start writing clear as soon as you open the cardboard cover of your copy you should not start writing question answer question number 1 chapter name chapter number and question number 1 no turn over the first page nothing should be written over there except your name class section roll number from the second page you will start writing the question answers always in physics chemistry and biology all the three copies you must remember okay so next we'll start motion thank you